Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall shall show forth forth thy thy grace. grace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it is, was, is now, now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cried out, In the wilderness people of the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up you, get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God coming with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is for him. His his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lamb in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Son of the Father, 
that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Let us together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide, and guide us, us the way, way of justice, justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy, thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain, and sustain us with thy spirit. spirit. Merciful God, who didst send thy messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee that the days to come may be spent in thy favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, so that everyone 
might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I know you just heard this collect prayed a moment ago, but I thought it bore repeating. Its message is so simple and so perfectly fitting for this second Sunday of Advent. Each of the weeks of this holy season leading up to Christmas has a specific emphasis And this week's is, as you might have heard in both the Collect and the scriptures we read today, prophecy. Now, contrary to its use in the popular vernacular, prophecy in the biblical sense does not mean magical predictions of events that are yet to come. Yes, the prophets in the Bible occasionally did this, but that was definitely not the centerpiece of their work. The prophet's role was, and still is, to be inspired of God to speak the truths that no one wants to hear, to shine the divine light upon the dark places of the earth where sin lurks undetected. As we heard in the Collect, the prophets were the ones who preached repentance and prepared the way for our salvation. And in the Gospel today, we heard the story of one particular prophet, said by Jesus to be the Bible's greatest, John the Baptist. So what is this repentance that the prophets John being the foremost, preached to prepare the way for our salvation. Here, we can get remarkably specific. They hardly ever talked about the stuff that Christianity seems to have gotten so hung up on in recent centuries. They spent little to no time on topics of sexuality the supposed evils and errors of religions other than their own seemed to concern them rather little. There were, however, two topics on which they seemed to have an endless amount to say. Idolatry and injustice toward the most vulnerable, specifically orphans and widows. Nearly every one of the prophets of the Old Testament, beginning with Moses and continuing straight through those who prophesied throughout Israel's centuries of monarchy, exile, and occupation by Assyrian, Babylonian, Greek, and Roman forces, focused the message on these two sins. God's people's failure to shun idols and failure to do justice by the least and poorest among them were the primary points of blockage, preventing the desired grace, power, and prosperity 
from spreading throughout the community and the world. And in the New Testament, John picks right up on this same theme. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In other words, the one who will bring in fullness what you have been waiting for all these centuries and millennia is waiting in the wings. I'm the last prophet you'll see before the one who brings full communion with God, the gift of the Holy Spirit, shows up in your very midst. But a last prophet you need urgently. You need someone to baptize you with water so you can be ready to stand in the presence of the incarnate word. And what does this water need to cleanse us from? The same things as always. Idolatry and injustice toward the lowest and the least. The voices of John the Baptist and the Old Testament prophets call to us still today, and they still have exactly the same purpose they did when they first appeared on earth. They call us to repentance in order to prepare the way for our salvation, to prepare us and the whole earth for the coming of the healing, the wholeness, and the beauty that our hearts so deeply desire. And the sins that those voices call to attention are the same ones they called out all those centuries ago. We are still idolaters who worship things that are less than the Creator, who alone is worthy of our worship. We look upon the plight of the orphan and the widow who have no defense from starvation and violence and do nothing to intervene. The details may have changed over the centuries, but the core remains absolutely the same. So we have our work cut out for us. The idols we worship are no longer statues made of wood, bronze, silver, and gold, but they are idols nonetheless. We worship fame. We worship earthly talent. We worship political ideologies. We worship mythologies about our nation, our race, and our past. We worship science, engineering, and medicine. Or perhaps we allow ourselves to be in a place of obsessive hatred towards some of these things or certain individuals involved. And this, too, is idolatry, simply the other side of the same coin. Now, none of these things that I just outlined is evil in and of itself. Many of these things are, in fact, excellent and wonderful. But when they become so central in our lives that they crowd out all else, then they have become our idols. When we cannot be bothered to stop doing and even thinking about these things, to regularly give thanks and praise to God simply for being who God is, we're in trouble. We're idolaters. But fortunately, the corrective action is pretty easy. It's to do what I just described, to make thanksgiving and praise to God a discipline, something we consistently treat as being more important than any of the other things we might be doing with our minds, our bodies, and our voices in the moment. 
And then there's also the matter of justice. Maybe justice isn't even really the best word for it. Compassion might be a better choice. Doing justice of the sort that John and all the prophets insisted upon is simply to decide that compassion is mandatory and not optional for us. It's not an easy shift that the prophets demand, but it is a fairly simple one. It's building a community and a society where the predictable result of a situation where someone shows up in distress is that they find themselves fed and sheltered rather than in a jail cell or a coffin. Compassion, not fear or judgment, becomes our knee-jerk response to distress and poverty. Okay, so this is a tall order. Eliminating all poverty and injustice from our lives and from our midst? It sounds impossible. While the Bible centers the narrative on Israel and then the Jesus movement, humanity as a whole has been trying to succeed at this venture for as long as there has been such a thing as humanity. And yet, we still, we have yet to make a whole lot of progress. We still need prophets to preach repentance and to prepare the way for our salvation. But here's where that beautiful passage we read today from the 40th chapter of Isaiah comes in. It's the trying that counts. It's the trying that God rewards. When God's people hear the words of the prophets and do not give up on trying to put them into action, God shows up with the reward. The times of trial and tribulation do not last forever. And that's what we need to remember right now. Yes, the prophets do very much have a word for us right now, a word we would be well advised to heed. And yes, heeding that word is no easy task. But when we put forth that effort, God does not wait for us to succeed fully. God comes running like the father of the prodigal son, reward in hand, and gives us the comfort and the good news that we seek. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world, saying, Come to thy people, O Christ, and set us free. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers, which we offer to thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Come to thy people, O Christ, and set us free. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may both in their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for St. Clement's Church in Berkeley. In our local community, we pray for the well Christian community in Livermore. Come to thy people, O Christ, and set set us free. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here, present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these names of our congregation. We pray for Pam and Gary, Yvonne, Jennifer, Pierre, Maureen, and Kylie, and as well as those in military service. We pray for Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Come to thy people, O Christ, and set us free. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Gavin, our governor, John, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Come to thy people, O Christ, and set us free. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious land in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. 
Come to thy people, O Christ, and set us free. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Olivia, Becky, Beth, Kathy, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava and Tamara, Glenis and James, Geraldine, Umberto and family, Candida and family, Janice, Joan, Luke, Marge and family, Marie R, Marie R, Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nan D, Nick, Michael and Sandra and Henrietta, Michael E, Sharon, Steve W and children, Yunus, Sarah and the Belici family, the Montgomery family, the Sherman family. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And at this time, anyone who has prayers for anything else may be added here. For the first responders during the COVID epidemic, for all nurses, doctors, police, and fire, especially Brad O and Brad S. A very happy birthday to John H. We wish healing prayers for all God's creatures experiencing the chaos that is 2020, and especially all those suffering from COVID. A special prayer to all those missing being with family this holiday season. May you all feel God's love for you. Come to thy people, O Christ, and set us free. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Elda M., Carl M., Lisa M., Walt D., Wilma M., and Matthew S., beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Come to thy people, O Christ, and set us free. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. In thanksgiving, together let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies 
that our, that our hearts, hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that, and that we, we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to him with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all our glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Thank you.